Hello, everyone. Uh, business aviation has certainly faced tough times before, including situations like the 9-11 uh, attacks. Uh, and these are situations that it couldn't have e easily planned for. COVID-19 is another one of those. It's a massive challenge with its own dynamics and characteristics. And so to better understand what it means to the industry, I'm joined today by Travis Kuhn, who is Vice President of Market Intelligence with Argus International. Now, Travis Travis holds an airline uh, transport pilot certificate. He's got over 3,500 flight hours. Um, but his main task uh, right now is that he produces the company's track pack flight activity report and also the forecasting model. And we're going to talk about that in more detail in a minute. But first of all, Travis, your data seems to confirm the widespread impact um, that the travel restrictions and overall drop in business activity uh, resulting from this pandemic are having. Can you just give us some idea of what your latest projections are telling us about the rest of this month and perhaps even beyond that? Yes, yeah, certainly, Charles. And first of all, thanks for having me on today. I hope that you and all your viewers out there are safe and well. Um, as you probably saw, our latest traffic numbers for March just came out last week and we saw activity was down about 30.7% every year. But to give you an idea of what that looks like and to quantify it, we saw about 266,000 flights in North America in 2019 in March. In 2020, this past month, we saw 182,000. So it was a significant drop. And our latest numbers for the month of April, the first week in April uh, in 2020 compared to the first week in April of 2019, we actually saw a drop in activity in business operations at 73.8%. So we're seeing significant drops in the industry. Right now, all indications are that that will probably pick up a little bit as the month goes on. So we're expecting to see activity down year over year in April, about 67%. Right. So pretty substantial. And we've just had to get used to that as being the temporary normal. Now, some might look at that and say, oh, no, here we go again. We're back in 2008, 2009. And look how long it took us to recover from, from that set of circumstances. Uh, should we view this in the same light as the, as the so-called great uh, downturn or great recession, or is this a, a different situation? That's a great question. I, I don't think so. You know, if we go back to 2008, 2009, it was a financial crisis when we entered it, and we knew we were entering it as a financial crisis. If you look at the dynamics that happened here. We're in a once-in-a-generation event, and going into it, specifically in the U.S. market, we were in a position of financial strength. And assuming this doesn't drag on for an appreciable period of time, we can expect that our rebound will occur and that uh, we will not see the lingering effect that we saw for years in 2008 and 2009. Mm -hmm. That's good to hear. And by the same token, of course, when people are looking at cycles in business aviation, uh, generally, they very often are looking at what's happening in Wall Street on, on the markets. Um, and one of the things you picked up on in your white paper report, you, you seem to be saying, you know, that this, the, the fluctuations in flight activity now aren't sort of completely tied to what's happening in the markets in the same way. What, what did you mean by that? Absolutely. So what we mean is that we're not currently seeing a correlation in what's happening presently in business aviation activity and what's happening on Wall Street. If we go back to 2008 and 2009, if you record the monthly clo close of the Dow towards the end of 2008 and early 2009 and compare it to flight activity, they mimicked each other. If you look at what's happened with flight activity present day and the Dow, the first bad day for the, the Dow Jones and Wall Street was February 24th as it relates to the COVID crisis. We did not see business aviation pull back until March 15th. And that was a direct correlation when we saw cases increasing in the U.S., as well as the increase in shelter in place and stay at home orders and the extreme social distancing measures we're seeing. So what we mean is that we do not presently see that correlation. We see more of a correlation in the stay at home orders, which are actually appear to be suppressing business aviation. Yeah, good point. And of course, you know, before this crisis um, kicked in, if you like, going back to the beginning of January, when most of us had no idea what this, that this was even a, a serious public health emergency. Um, the industry, the business aviation industry, was generally in fairly good shape, um, which I guess is what you're talking about there. So let's say the travel restrictions start to get lifted across the US and elsewhere. Is it reasonable to expect that as long as 
there isn't too much lasting damage to the economy, we can to some degree pick up where we left off. Absolutely. So if we look at this, one of the one of the variables are, as we've talked about, it's not a financial crisis. We didn't enter it as a financial crisis. Depending on the length that this lasts, it could become one. Indications are, though, that we might start seeing restrictions easier over the next few weeks, which I believe is good news. If you look at business aviation, it's actually positioned very well for this. It's an agile industry that's used to responding to requests for flight activity within hours or days, and and we'll be able to return to a position of strength sooner rather than later. One area, though, that I do think could be a problem uh, for business aviation is going to be in international operations. Mm -hmm. I expect those operations to be suppressed for some time. The exact impact at this point, I think, is too early to tell, but I would expect domestic operations resume closer to normal long before we see international operations resume. Mm -hmm. Good point. And in your view, how are business aircraft operators and the the wider support industry responding to this crisis? I mean, do they just have to sort of sit there and and accept it? Or is there is there more they could be doing to be ready for some sort of resumption? I think there's two two answers to that, actually. First of all, you know, business aviation and has always been around to assist in, in crisis and disaster relief. And I think we're seeing that now. We've seen Wheels Up do their Meals Up campaign. We've seen XO announce when they're flying into New York City, which is the epicenter here in the U.S., that they will carry medical supplies on their flights. So business aviation has certainly stepped up uh, when they need it. And I'm certain there are countless other examples out there that we haven't heard of. One of the challenges, though, I think operators will have have. If this should drag on for any appreciable period of time, they could run into currency issues with their flight crews. And so I do think it's important for the operators that are donating their airplanes for humanitarian relief, they're actually getting ahead of this uh, by leveraging their aircraft and their flight crews for this relief and positioning them for when the reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good point. Um, so finally, tell us, if you would, Travis, a little bit more about your track pack uh, flight activity reports and the forecasting you do. You know, how can these be helpful to the industry? Well, most of the time, but particularly at a time like this. You know, we live in a data driven world, Charles, and it, it, too often times it's information overload. And we're all pulling in all of these data points all day long. One of the most common questions we get from people is what does it all mean? And when it comes to quantifying business aviation in North America and Europe and around the world, that's where we come in. We're able to draw from our sources with the FAA within Europe with our ADSB network around the globe. And we're able to tell you activity was up 1% or down 2% or lately down 30%. But we, we like to get it to the point where we don't just tell you a number, but we tell you what it means. We draw on our years of analytics to be able to predict what's going to happen. And right now in the market that we are in, information and valuable information has never been at a higher value. And so we view our position as trying to get as much information out to decision makers as they can so that they have the right information to make the key decisions during this difficult period. Yeah, good point. Okay, well, we'll, in that case, we'll stay tuned to uh, the the data that you're looking at for us. And uh, thanks very much for your time today. I do appreciate that. Uh, None of us completely know what's going to unfold in the next few weeks, but uh, certainly it it sounds as if you're you're about as close to the pulse for this as, as anybody could be. Absolutely. Thank you, Charles, and stay well. You too. Thanks for watching this AIN video. Please like, subscribe, and share it if you've enjoyed it. Also, visit AINonline.com for all the latest on the aviation industry.